Hey everybody, time for another using Emacs video. Um, I want to show you some stuff that I've been playing with now. Uh, before I get to that, I, I want to comment on the uh, audio situation. Um, I, I know that uh, my videos have not had the best of audio, but to be quite honest, it gets a little bit tired of hearing, oh, thanks for the video, your audio sucks. I mean, I know there are problems, you're not telling me anything new. Um, I do want to thank the people who sent in uh, suggestions like turn off every Thing. Like you notice, everything is turned off here except this one. Except this one input. I hope that didn't screw everything up. Um, but anyway, um, so that um, you know, I've done that. So um, you know, um, how about instead of just saying you don't like the audio, just you know, you can always ship me a nice microphone or something. I'm happy to use it. Okay. Uh, so let's get on with the show. All right. So um, what I want to talk about today is I'm doing a little side project, and it's a side project, it's a little web application that I want to work on, and. Um, I want to do it in Clojure. Um, I'm, I'm by no means a Clojure expert. I mean, let me actually bring up the code here. So I'm um, using projectile to switch to the project. Um, and I'm going to go to there. OK. So um, I'm by no means an expert. So please do not, um, you know, like, oh, that's the wrong way to do it. Uh, however, if you're like, hey, um, there's a better way. If any, I'm, I'm not going to go through the closure code here because it's not about closure. It's about, um, it's about uh, testing the web stuff. Um, but I'm just learning this at the time. Um, you know, on and off. I played with it for the last couple of years, um, and, and I'm having fun with it. Um, so anyway, uh, normally the stuff that I've done in the past, I've normally done, I've done a back end in Python using Flask and a front end um, yeah, in most recently um, Vue.js is what I've been using in terms of the JavaScript framework. Um, but I want to do everything in Clojure and Clojure script. I had recently just wrote a couple of little um, a uh, little closure script, um, little games like Snake and Pong and Game of Life just to mess with that. And um, now I'm ready to do the um, more full application. Now, um, and the code I have here is just playing with setting up the infrastructure for authentication. Now, uh, when you're doing web development, yeah, anything more than just like uh, like if you look at those experiments that I did like so over here when I had um, let's go to GitHub um, and let's so uh, we'll go to life uh, you know so uh, closure game of life and this is a little closure script application it's the game of life it's not fancy or anything but the whole idea is this is just running here in the browser or will be running in the browser. So uh, let's, uh, let's fill it randomly and let's start it. Um, it's, just, it's just running in the browser, so it's just a regular program. But if you're going to write something a little bit more elaborate, a little bit more interesting, you're going to have two pieces. You're going to have a bunch of code for your client and a bunch of code for your server. And they're going to have to communicate back and forth. And when you're developing this, you can't really write a lot of the client first because you have no server to get any information. And writing the server's a pain because you have no client to test it with. So what do you do? Um, so one of the things you can do is um, you can make mock-ups uh, to test things. And I, I guess you could do that, and I'll probably look at that at some point. Um, the other thing you can do is, well, you can develop them both concurrently, and that's a nightmare. Um, but another thing you can do is you can kind of um, there are tools to help you send calls to the server as if you were the client. Um, and so that's what we're going to look at here for, uh, um, for today. Uh, before that, let's look a little bit at this application. Um, basically, I'm writing this as an API. And so I have, I have basically three calls here. Um, one is, well, the, um, the root, which you can always get to. And the root, if I go to index, it's just going to return a web page with status 200. And there's a little web page, hello world from closure. Uh, then I have a login route. And what the login route is going to do is um, it's going to then call, it's going to pull out your email and password and authenticate you. And if you have a valid username and password, it's going to send back a Java web token, which you're going to use later on to say, hey, I am legit. And for the code up there, 
you know, you can see here I have my secret, you know, one, two, three, four, five. I obviously pulled that off my luggage. Um, but I'm just generating a web token if your username, your email is Zemansky and your password is ZPass. Again, just proof of concept here. Um, the third route that I have is the API call here. And for the API call, what it's basically doing is saying, if you have a valid token, if you've already logged in, I'm just going to send back um, 200 as my status. Otherwise, I'm going to send back 401 as my status. OK, so that's basically it. That's all I've got here. Um, and this is just like another little route I was messing with. Um, so that's it. So let me start this running. This is something I love about Clojure is is you got this uh, um, cider as um, as your development environment under Emacs, and that's really really awesome. So I've just loaded it here, and of course we've got our little REPL here, where we can um, you know just type stuff in. It's, I guess we're still right. Yeah, so it's still running there. You know, you can use Emacs to move around and stuff. Why am I, oh, I should go to the web page. And here we're at our web page. Okay, now we're all connected. Uh, so I can do stuff. I can do various you know, closure -y things here. Let's switch off to our namespace. I always forget the keystrokes for that. But now if I run this, actually it already ran because I came to this, um, I can do things like, you know, if I want to evaluate some code up here, I can evaluate that. Or if I can do two plus three, I can evaluate that. Um, or let's go to our hello world from closure. And using Emacs, and I will, you know, reload it. Yeah, so um, it's a really, really nice development environment. It's even nicer for Closure Script on the front end. It's very, very cool. Um, now, one thing is you may have noticed that I just tried to upload. Um, I, I changed this, so if I change it back, let's say, and save this, or even if I execute it. It doesn't update here until I reload the page. Um, I haven't figured out how to get reloading work, so if any of you out there are closure aficionados, I'm using Composure and Ring, and Wrap Reload, which is supposed to do the reloading, I can't get that configured right. So any help would be much appreciated. Anyway, I can test my basic route, because that is a get request, um, and that works really easily. But if I want to go to the login page or anything, it becomes more of a mess. Um, now, so what I could actually do is most browsers, like here in Chrome, I've got this plugin, REST client, and I can do a REST request to uh, localhost 8080, and that works, and I can do my request, etc. and it, it basically sets up the call. But if I go to login, there's my call, and um, well, one, it's not found because this is a post request. So let's do that, and a binary, let's see the response, and it's unauthorized. Now I've got to figure out how do I do, um, well, my payload doesn't go in a header, and it's not authentication. You know, do I put it here as a username equals Zemansky and password equals hello, which is an invalid password. Let's see what that does. Let's send that. Um, and that's not right because it's not actually sending that data in. So, so it's not all clear what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to do it with this. Um, and even then, even if I could, and I'm, I'm sure I could, I could be the documentation, um, it's clunky. I mean, for me, it's clunky. You know, I'm, you know uh, Emacs users are, we're command line people. Now, if I go over to Chrome, I've got things like, um, where is it? I've got Restman and Postman. I guess those are both postman. And so I could be like, oh, let's do a post to localhost 8080, login, and it's not my body. Is this, uh, yeah, again, I'm still in kind of this figuring it all out. So don't like doing that. Now, what you might have noticed is when I did come over to here, it did give me the curl command that it used. So I could use curl from the command line, but you know there's got to be a better way. Of course there is, using Emacs. And what that is, is there's something in Emacs called REST client. And REST client, um, it's easy to install, just a little package here. Um, 
this pretty much should do it. Just install Emacs, install REST client. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to temp REST client test. Go open this new buffer. And I'm going to do a request. I'm going to do a get request to HTTP localhost 8080. I'll hit control C, control C. It's not defined because I'm not in REST client mode. Control C, control C. And there's my request, hello world from closure, and it worked. And if I get rid of the from closure stuff, and I come here and I do it again, it's just hello world. So right, and I have my input, I have my call, I've got my output really easy. So I want my next call, and I'm using the, um, the hash mark as a separator here. So I'm going to say post to login. And if I run it, and keep an eye down here as well, it's not sending any data, it's unauthorized, but that's okay. You know, that's, that's kind of what we want so far. So I'm gonna send the contents type, and notice the, I'm uh, getting my completion, or it was getting my completion, yeah, there we go. Content type, um, and it's going to be application, and that's what we're gonna want. And then we have to skip a line, and then we can say email equals Zamansky and the password equals hello, invalid password, and run it. And notice um, email, password, okay, um, that's fine. It's not what we want, but that's okay. Um, so instead, let's send the correct password, control C, control C. And notice when it was, whoops, when it was hello. I got unauthorized here, but when it was ZPass, I get this token back. So now let's do another call. Let's do the API call. So that's going to be a get localhost 8080 API call. And I've got, if I just call this, it's unauthorized. And I want to do a quick thing here. I want to come up here and it's not working anymore, it's not giving me a token. Notice that it's giving me this new line here, um, now that I have another one, because it's reading this in here. So I'm gonna put in just another um, hash mark there to terminate the previous, uh, the previous call. So notice that down here, API call is, in, is invalid. So we're gonna have to send a header. And this is going to be invalid because we don't have a valid token. But if we run this, and now, since we're in Emacs, we can just cut that out and put it there. And now, all of a sudden, status is 200, and it all works. And notice how quick and easy that was because I can just use Emacs. You know, and I can save all of this. And, and actually, if you, um, I copied this over, um, before it's off the other side and um, you know if you look at the documentation for this there's a lot of cool stuff you can do so here's one of the uh, examples they give to pull an image from Wikipedia uh, which should hopefully eventually oh I have to separate this sorry and there we go uh, now over here back to this call if I run this again I'm still at 200 but I set my token in my closure code um, to time out after 60 seconds so we're just going to you know now it's unauthorized and if I want to reauthorize you know really simple get a new token and now we're reauthorized again so this REST client is super, super cool. Uh, it makes it so easy. It, you know, you can just uh, look up the website. You can just do, um, you know, Emacs REST client. Um, a lot of, you know, it, it has all, you know, if you have a bunch of these, you can easily move around. Um, very easy, a lot of great examples if you want to send JSON, etc. Um, I'm really liking it a lot. It's making, it's making development so much more pleasurable. Um, so that's it for today, and I hope you enjoy it.